شعت شموس الهدي بالكلمات فنارت الأفهام بالآيات أسرج بنور العلم عقلا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الشريف الرضي narrates a hadith from Imam Ali alayhi salam in his book Nahj al-Balagha, Peak of Equivalence. The hadith states, Allah, Allah fil Qur'an la yasbukukum bihi ila al-amali ghayrakum. Be mindful when it comes to the Qur'an. No one should beat you to implementing it. This statement by Imam Ali alayhi salam has several possible meanings. I will mention two in this discussion. The first meaning, the Holy Qur'an consists of a set of values, rulings, and moral codes and social ethics. Every one of us, of a believer, must be the first to represent those values and implementing those moral teachings. There is a problem which affects many people, and this problem is that they look at the status of co and the existings of conditions in the society and life. A person looks at the society and tries to become like his society. This phenomenon is wrong. When it comes to spiritual and unseen matters, a believer must look at the highest peaks. A believer must always be well accomplished and distinguished. A believer should try to be the first in all aspects of goodness. And if he or she cannot be ahead of others, then at least he or she should be among the first ones. The Qur'an mentions the truthful ones. Who is the highest example of truthfulness? Obviously, we're not talking about the Prophet, peace be upon him, and his pure household, as their status is beyond our reach. Imam Ali salam says, and you will not have the ability to be pious like your Imam. Therefore, who was after the Prophet and his holy household who manifested the value of truthfulness in his life? Among these, best example is Abu Dhar al-Ghafari. The Prophet described him once and said, مَا أَقَلَّتِ الْغَبْرَاءِ وَلَا أَظَلَّتِ الْغَفْرَاءِ مِنْ رَجُلٍ أَصْطَقَ لَهْجَةٍ مِنْ أَبِي ذَرِ Neither the sky has covered nor has the earth carried anyone more truthful and honest than Abu Dhar. We should try to be like Abadar al Ghafari. We could reach that status. Abadar was a person like any one of us. Prior to Islam, Abadar was an idol worshiper and his tribe was known as looters of caravans. Yet Abadar turned to become one of those who Rasulullah says, Neither has the sky covered nor has the earth carried anyone more truthful and honest than Abadar. Who is the highest example of manifestation of forgiveness? When it comes to forgiving, we should not only look up to our society and friends and co-workers, we should look up to a person like Abu Dhar al-Ghafari. Imam Ali salam states in the hadith, whoever determined to achieve something, then they will get close to achieving it. We can either achieve a status like Abu Dhar al-Ghafari or get close to it. Who is the highest example of manifestation of forgiveness after the Prophet and his holy household? Who comes next? Malik al-Ashtar. According to the well-known story, he went to the masjid to pray and ask for forgiveness for the person who wronged him. For forgiveness, we must try to become like Malik al-Ashtar, who is the highest example when it comes to worship. Who? Among the important values, the Qur'an mentions the values of worship. Among those fine examples of worship, it's Uwais al-Qurani. We should try hard to work to become like him. Who is the highest example when it comes to valuing your parents? Again, it's Uwais al-Qurani, who was the best example. We should try to become like him. If we determine to become like them, God's will will help us become like them. 
going back to the hadith no one should beat you to implementing no one should race us to it you should either race others to, to, to try to implement the Quran this was the first possible meaning of this hadith here is the second meaning as the Holy Quran consists of various values and those values are essence of any civilization if we ever wanted to transform our reality to change the depression we currently face the only solution to adhering to those values Imam Ali السلام, says be mindful of Allah when it comes to the Quran no one should beat you to implementing it others have come to implement the values of the Quran and have passed us non-Muslims work accordance to the teachings of the Holy Quran the technological superiority and progress in the West is due to their work in accordance to the Holy Quran although on a very limited level and scale we neglected those verses we have forgotten those verses hence we are facing hardship among the important figures of Judaism who changed the reality of the Jews to what it is today was Theodore Herzl Herzl was asked how were you able to be transformed the reality of Jews from what it was like and what it has become today he replied saying I was thinking the reason behind our miseries I read different sources to find out the key to our solution until I got to this Quranic verse paradise is not obtained by your wishful thinking nor by the people of the book reform is not achieved through wishful thinking and hopes the verse continues whoever does wrong will be recompensed for it Herzl states I realized it holds the key to our salvation and reform hence I started to plan and reform out reality non-Muslims have taken from the Holy Quran and had adhered to it and for as much as they have taken from the Quran they have advanced regardless of all the flaws and the problems of the Western world they hold certain values laid out by the Holy Quran and for that much they have succeeded Sayyidina Muhammad al-Shirazi may Allah bless his soul has said that the West has taken 1% from the Holy Quran and has exceeded us by miles the law of freedom what is the origin of the law it's a Quranic law who followed this law us Muslims did not adhere to this hence our nations are places for terrorism what is the origin of consultation it is our law or theirs the Holy Quran calls upon and says to uphold the principles of consultation as the Holy Quran states and says their affairs is to determine by the consultation among themselves do we Muslim have consultations the West civilization has implemented the law of consultation by 10% and they have greatly exceeded us it states in the Holy Quran and indeed this your nation is one nation do we have a United Nations now or does the Western countries have the concept of one United Nations the law of brotherhood is found in the Quran do we have the concept among us does the concept of brotherhood govern in our countries today instead we say that this person is a foreigner we Muslims in general have turned away from these verses while others have succeeded because they implemented the Holy Quran no one should beat you to implementing it another verse which is neglected in the Holy Quran is the verse and marry the unmarried among you and the righteous among your males and females this law is simoned by the Holy Quran and presently in our countries Muslim countries 
It's filled with unmarried men and women. We must turn back to the Holy Quran as our happiness and life in hereafter is laid in that. وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الإمام أمير المؤمنين صلوات الله عليه يقول الله الله في القرآن لا يسبقكم بالعمل به غيركم نحن أهملنا هذه الآيات فابتلينا بهذه المشاكل